Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Adam Huber. He's the Allen County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Joanna. How are you? I'm good, but today we are going to talk about the king of all vegetables and that's right. tomatoes. Everybody yep. wants to have tomatoes in their gardens, but sometimes they start seeing some things go wrong and they have questions yep. about it. That's right. Yeah, you know, uh, tomato is, like I said, the king of all of our vegetable crops and um you know, me being uh, in Allen County, you know, they're the number one vegetable producing county in the state. So I get to see a lot of tomatoes and a lot of other vegetables in general. Um, and so, you know, this time of year, we really do start to see uh, some disease pressure depending on, you know, the weather um, and, and, and things like that. So, you know, it is beginning to be that time of year where we're going to start seeing some, some issues probably. What are some of the top issues that you see though with tomatoes? Yeah, so there are a few um, that we see pretty common. Um, one of them being blossom end rot. Mm -hmm. That's not actually a disease. It's actually a uh, kind of like a nutrient deficiency um, of calcium. Now it's not necessarily a calcium deficiency of your soil. It's basically uh, once that fruit starting to ripen, um, the translocation of calcium to the fruit. Um, is, is lacking there. Soil moisture is, is kind of what causes that. So if you don't, if you're not watering your, your tomato plants properly or as often as you should, you possibly might see uh, some blossom end rot. And what that looks like is basically uh, once your fruit starts to develop, um, the bottom of the fruit will start to turn black and brown and just kind of look like it's starting to rot. Mm -hmm. um, another one would be anthracnose. That's another pretty common disease that we see with our tomato plants. Once your tomato, uh, you've got your fruit, what you'll start seeing is little circular lesions on that plant or on that fruit. Um, they'll start to get, start to sink, sink in. Um, and they kind of form all around the fruit. Mm. And so once you start seeing that, that's more than likely what your issue is there. Now there are some products that you can uh, apply on that if you uh, want to apply any kind of pesticides to prevent you know, these types of issues. Um, your, your fixed coppers, um, some Mangazeb products, um, chlorothalonil, that's another product that uh, you can apply on there as well. Um, and with the early blight, that's the next one we're going to talk about. Those same products um, are effective for it effective as well. Effective for the same. So you're doing pretty good as far as uh, knocking out a couple of diseases with one product. Now the blight, though, well, it's it presents itself in a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with the blight, you're going to see that um, typically uh, it can be on three different parts of the plant. It can be on the stems, the fruit, or the leaves. Now, with your, with your uh, early blight, it's going to be more of a brown type of look. It's going to be circular still, um, but it's going to be more, uh, a little bit larger than, than your anthracnose would be. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. It kind of looks like it comes from the, the ground up. up. Yep. And so if you start seeing some of that, mm -hmm. you definitely need to maybe look at some of these products. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely need to, you know, like I said, it starts on the older leaves from the ground up. It'd be better to start with a preventative method, um, apply those products prior to seeing any type of uh, disease presence. Um, you know, like I said, you know, your coppers, mangazebs, chlorothalonil, those are products that you can apply as a preventative. Right. And so we have some resources available at the Extension Office for mm -hmm. people who might need to know what's going on with their tomatoes right. and what to do about them, right? Yeah. So we have a, 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 a publication that's called ID172. It's uh, an IPM uh, guide for solanaceous crops. Um, that includes tomatoes, peppers, all those uh, crops in that same family. Um, it's really good, you know, really good publication that we've got. And it goes through, tells you um, all the diseases that you might see, um, all the insects that you might see. It gives you, uh, you know, for, uh, uh, chemical applications that you can use and things like that. We also have another uh, publication, it's ID128. It's our Home Vegetable Gardening in Kentucky publication. <clears throat> it does a really good job as well as far as uh, explaining, you know, um, diseases and insects and lots of different things. Uh, not necessarily just for tomato crops or solanaceous crops, but just all of your crops in general. All right. Well, Adam, certainly appreciate the information. If you have any questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.